I'm Derek Finney with Clemson Extension and today in this video we're going to talk about the when and why to thin your long leaf and also other things to consider along the way. Hi, I'm Brandon Heitkamp with Silver Bluff Audubon Center and Sanctuary and lucky to have Longleaf Alliance and Clemson out with me today to stop and look at some places like this that need thinning and some other longleaf stands that have already been thinned. When you're looking at a stand that's never been thinned before, you can tell it's ready because there will be very little in the understory except pine straw. There's almost nothing here. Uh, dead down wood where it's caused stress and things have fallen over, but for the most part, very little sunlight on the ground. If you look up, it's mostly green because there's not room for the trees to grow. It shows you that it's time for it to be thinned and that's when we want to come in and put the rose in and try to get it on its way to growing more aggressively. After you've determined that you need to thin in your long leaf, next is to pick which trees stay and which trees go. Your better trees, the straight ones that are healthy, are the ones you want to keep. And then the ones that have fusiform cat face or twists or forks, or maybe the top has been blown out in a storm, are the ones that are easiest to put on the chopping block. Then as you look around, you may have to take some good trees as well after you take all of your forks because you want a good even spacing to encourage growth on what you leave behind. So following these thinnings, what we like to see is an increase in sunlight reaching the forest floor to see that vegetation response. And then when we look up in the canopies of our tree, you'll see these crowns are no longer touching each other. So it gives them more room to grow, put on larger growth, and then be able to support a better, healthier tree moving forward. So often after you do a thinning operation, you'll have a lot of soil disturbance and splash on the ground, but not too long after. Within six to nine months, you'll get a good vegetative response. And that vegetation, including the forbs and legumes and grasses, like these plume grasses, will provide food for wildlife and also be fuel to carry prescribed fire. Um, and then in these mature stands, you'll also get great long leaf regeneration. Hopefully today you've learned a lot about thinning and longleaf and making a habitat that at the end goal would look a lot like this. This is a well-spaced 72-year-old longleaf stand with a very biodiverse understory including your wire grasses and your natural longleaf coming up underneath it. It makes for very good wildlife and good timber and a beautiful place to stand and hear some birds. 